A couple in their early 50s wanted to know if they could reach financial independence and retire early at age 55. So stay tuned for the full episode. Thank you for watching. This is Richard with Wisdom Investor. We're going to take a look at a couple that wants to retire early. They think they're real close to financial independence. Now they've made some excellent decisions along the way, so they're looking really good here. However, they want to know if they can make this work. So let's take a look at this situation. Richard, I'd like to estimate potential spending during retirement. My wife and I have always been frugal. We are putting two college kids through college. I would like to retire five years from now. I'm also very concerned about the future cost of health care since we don't have Medicare if we retire early and appreciate your details in this aspect. I'm 50 and my wife's 52. As far as their savings and investments, they have a variety of IRAs, Roth IRAs, 401k, also money and checking and savings account. They go on to say we own our home and no debts. Property tax about $8,000 per year. Cash saving per year. They estimate they're going to be able to save an extra $30,000 per year over the next five years, which is about $150,000. For Social Security, if he retired at 67, which is full retirement age, his Social Security would be $3,233. At age 62, if he retired early, Social Security would be $2,222 per month. If he waited till age 70, Social Security would be $4,055 per month. His wife, if she retired at full retirement age of 67, she would receive $742 per month. As far as his investing strategy right now, he says, I will wait for a significant discount or correction in the market before entering. I'm going to give one perspective, what I see on this particular situation. If you have any suggestions, leave your comments. They're much appreciated. So let's take a look at the facts of the case here. They're 50 years old, wife is 52. They want to retire at 55, wife at 57. The main issue is income from ages 55 to 67 when they retire. House is paid for, no debts. He's very concerned about future cost of health insurance. Here's an overview of their investments right now. Have a total of about $1.2 million. They're going to save another $150,000 over the next five years. So they should have a base amount here of $1,400,000 in the next five years. Let's review the facts about their cash situation. So they have several accounts here with a total in cash, $717,000. Let's look at the facts here on the retirement savings. They have a traditional IRA, a Roth 401k, Roth IRAs, and a total on that is $550,000. And let's review the facts on Social Security and pension. Has a small pension, $2,376 per year. At full retirement age, $3,233 per month. Wife would be $742 per month if they waited till the full retirement age of 67. Okay, here's our questions we're going to answer. When should the couple take Social Security? Should they take it at 62 or 67? What account should they withdraw money from for living expenses from the age of 55 to 67? Will they have enough to retire at 55 and concerns over health insurance? Again, your input is very important here. Okay, let's take a look at the first situation. Should he take Social Security at 62 or 67? Keep in mind, if he uses his savings from the ages of 55 to 67, he will be drawing down his savings. However, his Social Security would be continuing to grow to age 67. Now, the other angle, if he uses the Social Security at 62, he will receive a smaller amount on the Social Security since he's taking it prior to his full retirement age. However, on the other side, he will be saving his retirement savings for later and he can pass this down to his children or heirs. We're going to take a look at a Social Security spousal strategy here for a husband and wife. If they both wait till full retirement age, his wife will be able to receive 50% of his full retirement amount, which is 3233 so if we take 3,233, divide that by two, she would earn 1,616 instead of 742. When you add these two together, it would be $4,849 in Social Security at age 67. Let's look at decision number two. Should the viewer use money from bucket one, which was the taxable money, or bucket two, which was the Ross and IRA combinations, 
to subsidize their living from ages 55 to 67. We're going to look at decision number two here. I do want to say this, that our couple here has been very brilliant in managing their retirement money. Most of their money has been switched over into Roth accounts. So let's take a look at it. Bucket number two here. They do have one traditional IRA, $231,000, and the rest of the accounts are in Roth IRAs. Now looking at the traditional IRA here, there's no penalty if they withdraw after 59 and a half. So they really wouldn't be able to use this money at the age of 55 unless they wanted to pay a penalty, which there's no reason to do that. The Roth 401k here, also they can use that at the age of 59 and a half or after the account has been open for at least five years. Now a Roth 401k is subject to required minimum distributions if they roll this money over into a Roth IRA, there's no required minimum distributions. So the same goes for these other Roth accounts. They can't take it out prior to 59 and a half. So really, they don't want to use bucket number two, the IRAs, for the years between 55 and 60. So at least the ages between 55 and 60, they're going to want to draw down money from their cash account here. And once the husband reaches 60, he can start withdrawing from this Roth 401k. That way they don't have to worry about the required minimum distributions when they turn 72. Okay, for decision number one, we said take Social Security at age 67, full retirement age for both of them. And then decision number two, use the cash accounts at least from the age 55 to 60. Now let's take a look at decision number three. Decision number three, will they have enough to retire at age 55? I'm estimating that if they spent $30,000 per year, they could draw down their assets at $2,500 per month. Keep in mind, the house is paid for. There's no debts. Taxes are about $8,000 per year. There's going to be some other unknown expenses, insurance, and so on. They asked about health insurance. I'm going to go ahead and cover the health insurance here. But if they're taking out of the cash account approximately $30,000 per year, there's going to be very little income from that. So the health insurance I don't see is going to be a big factor at this time. Now, of course, five years from now, what's health insurance going to be like? What's it going to cost? We don't know, but it's probably not going to be cheaper than it is today. So if we do some calculations here, $30,000 per year is the drawdown out of their assets. We're going to throw in 2% inflation, a 12% tax bracket, that's an estimate. We don't know what taxes would be like five years from now. A 6% growth on the money with a balance of $1.4 in five years. After 12 years with the $30,000 drawdown per year, they're still going to be left with $2,756,000 saved up. So to answer their question about financial independence, I think they will definitely have reached financial independence by the age of 55. Financial independence meaning you can do what you want to do whenever you want to do it. Now, as far as the investment side of this, our couple said they wanted to wait till there's substantial correction. So in the meantime, as far as parking this money, I would suggest using some short-term bond funds. Of course, they could also use CDs, Certificate of Deposits. Here's some examples of short-term bond funds that I use and I personally like. You can see that some of these have a lower interest, some of them a little bit higher interest. The main thing is here in the duration of these, these are short-term bonds versus long-term bonds. Here's another list of some of these short-term bond funds. These have a little bit longer term and a little bit higher interest rate, and they pay dividends on a monthly basis. Let's look at interest rates and bond funds. Interest rates have been increasing. When interest rates start to increase, bonds start to move lower. This is the TLT 20-year bond fund. Now these two lines here, this blue and black line here that are going up are two bond funds that are short term. And you can see that as the TLT bond fund has gone down because interest rates rise, these bond funds have pretty much held their price. Keep in mind, they're not the same as certificate deposits always keep track of your money watch what's going on and investigate before you invest in anything make sure you understand what's going on
If all goes well here, our couple's going to be able to reach the land of critical mass where they can do what they want to do whenever they want to. In other words, reach financial independence. So in this video, we said they could take their Social Security at age 67, withdraw from the taxable account from 55 to 60, and then use the 401k Roth at age 60 to draw that down so they don't have the required minimum distributions to work with. And also, the health insurance is not going to be a problem. They could start withdrawing about $2,500 per month or more. That would be just fine. They're going to have plenty of savings. Social Security is going to be there at age 67 to even help buffer their situation that much better. So I want to thank you for watching. Stay tuned for our next update.